Today we're in Ranger, Texas. I'm with my good friend Bobby Stevens with Reptile Rescue and Relocation. Bobby, could you tell us a little bit about what your organization does? Now, you're a nonprofit organization, is that correct? correct? We are a 501c3, state and federally recognized. We uh, have three primary field of interest. We do conservation, education, and research. We do both clinical and field research study. Well, Bobby has a laboratory in his facility here, and today what we're going to do, we're going to milk some rattlesnakes. Through the course of milking these rattlesnakes, we're going to try to explain why we would milk one, what the venom is used for, and the process used to get that venom in a usable form. Uh, from here, we'll extract, put everything in here. We'll move over here, we'll pour into these for different measurements, and then we'll line them up evenly to figure out like what we have, and then we'll spin it. And once we spin it, then you know, that removes the epithelial cell, and we can go through and uh, start our free drying process. When we wash some of this stuff, we have a, an autoclave that we can sterilize, but some of this stuff doesn't, doesn't necessarily need to be sterilized. So we'll dry it out with the dehydrator, and then we'll put it in here, and we'll spin it down, and then we'll extract out of these tubes. We'll take and we'll use sterile pipettes, and then we start our free drying process. We're getting a pretty good little assembly line set up here. Bobby, is it going smoothly over there at the milking table? Yeah, everybody seems pretty happy. Uh, should be in the reptile room, the warming room. Mm. So we have a double pane. A lot of times we'll go through and see if it's loose. Maybe just for now.
Well, not quite there yet. We Are you pull doing it. work on the rattlesnake bottom? Well, you know, sometimes everybody's got to have their teeth examined sometimes. <laughs> He too has a double fang, but he's also got one in the bottom that looks like it's already shed, but it's just sitting there. We're going to try to get that out. Yeah. Ordinarily, I would not be sticking my fingers in there. <laughs> you certainly don't want to leave them laying around for somebody to step on. Mm. Sometimes you get stuck. So what we're going to do is we'll show you, he's got some bruising, mm. and busted blood vessels here. Looks like he might be starting to develop mouth rot. So what causes that? Uh, poor immune system, uh, could be a, a number of elemental factors. Right now, a good cleaning. Keeping him warm. Got a little bit of dirt down there. So he's probably bitten into something that didn't settle with his immune system. And during the winter months, they become compromised. And many of them don't survive the winter. But he definitely will keep him under closer observation. We're just going to try to agitate it a little bit. I don't want to really put a whole lot of pressure on their skull. Until a little bit of massaging goes a long way. So, how much do we get out of 25 snakes? Oh, right now we're sitting probably at about three, 0.3, ounces, but we'll uh, measure it in milliliters here. Um, yeah, we'll just go straight from here. We'll take one of these. Are you going to show the centrifuge process? Mm -hmm. Certainly. Or kind of go, at least go down. I know we went over it a little bit earlier, but maybe if we can go through taking this venom. Sure. Through so the, ordinarily, we would. take it. You can see there's different skin cell, I mean there's little hair follicles, I mean the things that come out of their mouth. You never know what they've been exposed to. Wild or Ooh. take and put these in equal collection sample. That stuff is a golden yellow. Yeah, it looks kind of like orange juice. Yeah. Doesn't taste like orange uh, juice. It's got a bitter taste to it. Yeah, it certainly don't taste like it. We're just going to balance it in the centrifuge as it is. We'll just take this in here and we'll balance it or equalize it with some water. And we'll just use saline for here. let that spin so what's that doing in there so what it's doing is it's, it's spinning it down and removing epithelial cells which is skin cells any kind of debris that may collect inside of their mouth tissue uh, just just anything that's not actually liquid it will spin it all the way down and then you'll see it form in the bottom and then we will remove it from there and then run it through some of our filters before we go in and freeze dry it So here, we have some that they've requested not be freeze dried, and then we have some that we can store for ourselves. So we've got 
what was, used to be Trans Pecos Copperhead is now combined with broadband. Uh, timber rattlesnake, we've got a couple of different ones from different regions that are being tested based on what type of toxin, whether it's an A, a B, or an AB combination. Okay, so this is a uh, Crotalus atrox, which is a western diamondback freeze dried venom. This is a sample that we use within uh, some of our research, our in house research. This is basically just once it's purified and clean, then we freeze dry it out and it turns into the yellowish powder. Where else are you going to see a 70 year old man with a school ball leg on one side that can do more than a lot of 30 year olds who've got both their legs? <laughs>